The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Special uh, Event Webinar. It's a Pro Trader Webinar Series here uh, that we have uh, a few times each quarter. Uh, and today we have something really special. Uh, this is going to be uh, an interview uh, with uh, Brett, Dr. Brett Steinbarger, uh, or Steinbarger, and Scott Pulsini. Uh, they have a long history. Uh, and uh, I think I'll let them kind of elaborate on their um, uh, credentials and uh, their background. Uh, but uh, what we're really going to get here uh, is an insight between uh, a, a professional uh, trader uh, and uh, a leading in, uh, industry um, a trader psychologist uh, and, uh, and a discussion between the two. Uh, and also we have something uh, very unique and special here uh, that Scott is going to show and uh, I'll have to... Uh, uh, interrupt during the webinar uh, and get into some of the details on it. Uh, there is something in the handouts folder uh, for the um, uh, this uh, uh, bookmap MBO uh, bundle indicator that Scott is going to cover. Uh, and don't worry, we'll, we'll go through it in detail. I will also put Scott's uh, information into the chat here for you if you want to reach out and uh, talk to Scott about some of his uh, educational services. So risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, with that, I'll turn it right over to Scott. How you doing, Bruce? And Dr. Doing, Brett? Doing very hey well. Hey there. So, um let me uh let me grab this right now before we get going uh, let me know when you can see my screen and which screen you see actually yes uh your two you daughters perfect okay um yeah so bruce once again thanks for having myself and dr brett on this is this will be interesting dr brett and i haven't uh we haven't dove into trading like this for a number of years. Um, should be fun, but uh, you know, I'll give a. I'm going to give a brief history. I've gone over it enough in the prior webinars, but um, it's worth noting again just to you know hear what how Dr. Brett and I met, and you know what he did early in my trading career, and then I'll start to get into some examples. But uh, you know, I started trading in 2001, right after 9/11, and um, literally was losing money every day for almost two months was about to get fired uh 9 11 happened and i went over to um german dax to figure out you know just to get some experience and i figured out some nuances there and then when the you know stock indices futures opened up back up i started to apply what i learned there in, in the m and s p and then all of a sudden i went from losing every day to making you know millions of dollars um over a you know three four year period and right in the middle of that dr brett came uh, came into our firm and he was our trading psychologist. So it's kind of like, I don't know if you're familiar with that show Billions on HBO. Uh, it, it was, it's kind of like that. I mean, he was there for traders that were struggling or I mean, let him, I'll let him tell, tell you a little more about that, but you know, traders that were struggling or, you know, losing their minds, things like that, or, you know, just, he was, he was very helpful. And then he, um, he ended up, he was writing a book and he asked if he can sit behind me um, when he was writing enhancing, enhancing Trader Performance. He asked if he can sit behind me and watch me trade just to kind of learn, you know, how I, what I looked at or how, how I reacted and what made me great at the time. Um, again, like I always tell in the story is I was a million dollar trader, right? I was more of a rags to riches to rags type trader where, um, you know, I made millions of dollars, but then when the algorithms and the low volatility around 2005, 2006 started to take hold, I couldn't make a dime. I went from making millions to couldn't make a dollar to then losing um, and then parting ways with my firm and then, you know, uh, being a vagabond for years trying to, you know, going from firm to firm, trying to figure out a new way to trade that I was, that I had a gift at um, and I was just never, I, I just never could ever duplicate anything near what I did in those days I was scalping, um, that was my gift and that gift went away. And a lot of traders can attest to the same thing in, in certain ways. Um, so, you know, I was basically rudderless and 
even had to get out of the business for a few years in 2013 until, of course, Dr. Brett um, showed me Bookmap. And the minute I saw it, I knew I was back. I knew that just like I knew when I was going to make, you know, millions of dollars when I bet my the owner of my firm that I would be the number one trader in 2002 um, after losing every day for the first two months. The same thing happened when I saw Bookmap. As soon as I saw it, I knew this was the missing piece of trading that I was longing for. Um, so then fast forward today, I've been using this uh, very successfully and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And uh, I'll show you some new things that you guys are introducing, which is just absolutely incredible. But uh, I'll let Dr. Brett, you gotta be kidding me. Hello? Yes. Yeah, you're there. Okay. Yeah, let me just jump in and make a little comment about what's I'm sorry, Todd my said. All, all my screen, all my screen just went, all my screens just went black. Sorry, that's why you said you got to be kidding me. <laughs> no, it's, I'm back. it's back. I'm back. It's back. Yeah. Take away, Dr. Brett. Okay, that <laughs> sounds good. Uh, yeah, just a quick comment on what you were saying, uh, Scott. That there's one sentence you said that uh, I'll disagree with. You you said that your gift went away. And the gift doesn't go away. The gift is a set of talents that you have that successful traders have, and different traders have different gifts. What was happening back in Chicago in that 2001, 2002 and, and after period was that you had information close to the market that allowed you to utilize your gift. And right. so you could see in real time who was doing what. And you were trading very quick time frames, very close to the market. There were times, Scott, I don't know if you remember, there were times where you were trading in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out on the S&P. And I would mention something that the S&P had done for the day, like how it closed for the day. And you weren't even following that. You didn't even know that the S&P was up a lot or down a lot necessarily because you were so focused tick by tick. Who's in the market? What are they doing? When right, the algorithms exactly. took, you, you remember that? When the algorithms took over a course, there was all the spoofing and it became next to impossible to figure out who was doing what. And that's what interested me in the book map information because here you can actually see on the screen the historical order flow to tell you which <laughs> bids and offers are real and which price levels are significant, which is the exact same information you were using back when. So uh, I, I think it's a real potential source of edge, not only for you, but for the uh, traders who are attending today. Right, absolutely. And, you know, when I tell the story, um, you know, about my scalping days, I mean, there are days that, like you were saying, I, I wouldn't even have a chart up. I was just watching straight order flow. Um, I wouldn't know one thing about, you know, breakouts or, you know, if we were in a range or anything like that, I would literally bring up my TT screen. That was the, the front end I used at the time software and look at the ladder and watch the, the orders come in. And that's how I would make my decisions. And that's why, because that's still how, you know, after learning about Bookmap, that's how I make my decisions again, because now, you know, I, I've learned a lot as far as the technical side since then, using bar charts and everything else. But, you know, like, I, again, I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not a uh, gifted trader just by looking at a bar chart technically. And most aren't because, you know, things don't always work. But then when you tie in the real time volume, that's when you get, um, that's when you start to understand what's really happening, you know, what the, what the big money is really doing in the market. And that's who you want to follow. Right. And again, I, you know, all these stories that I tell or all these examples I give is because I used to be the, the big money. So I, I know what works, what doesn't work, things like that. So you're exactly right, Brett. Good, good, good. 
Okay, so shockingly, just like happened a couple webinars ago, I don't know if it's something with GoTo webinar, but it knocks out all of my uh, examples. So I'm gonna, I, at least I have them backed up a little bit here, but I'll, I'll be going. It's gonna probably take me, you know, a second or two to bring up each individual one. Um, but uh, I apologize. I don't know. There's something with GoTo webinar that does something to my computer. But anyway, um, do you want to? How do you want to do this, Bruce? Do you want me to just get into some examples or do you want to talk more about the, our history together? Or... Um, well, I mean, I think uh, maybe maybe you can uh, uh, kind of build those, those images uh, uh, back together again. Um, and let's just go through that and uh, what, what you were looking at or, and just the relationship uh, between you two. Uh, you know, I, I recall reading, uh, you know, Brett's book, uh, uh, Enhancing uh, Trader Performance. I don't know when was it released? Was it 2006 or uh, 2003, something like that? And uh, and then reading about you as well, and then uh, here you guys are. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, go go through and uh, discuss like uh, uh, the processes that what you were thinking about, uh, and uh, uh, and then the insights from from Brett. Um, and I don't know if Brett, you wanted to talk about uh, uh, you know meeting Scott and. and and uh, you know what uh, you had, uh, uh, you know, come across, uh, and the the time spent, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. I'll just mention one thing real quickly, and let's get to the charts uh, um, and and the real data. Um, if you look at the same information as everyone else, you will see the same things that other people see and you will trade the way other people trade. The traders I work with who are successful are looking at new and different information or they're looking at existing information in new and different ways. We have to see markets differently to trade them differently Otherwise, we're going to have consensus results, not outstanding results. Right, exactly. And that, and that's again, you know, I, I just, I, I can't stress it enough. That's that's what this program, the software bookmap gives you. It gives you advantages over 99% of the trainers would be my guess that that you know don't have access to this or don't know how to use it and are just looking at bar charts. Again, if you're looking at just bar charts or a couple different indicators um you're just not seeing the whole picture you're not really seeing what's going on right you're not the, the biggest thing bookmap does for me is it helps me understand even when i'm wrong i know most of the time i know why i'm wrong right you're seeing what the what the big players are doing and it explains it instead of just looking at a chart and then you know i've given this example before where it keeps bouncing off vwap and then one time then, then the next time you try to play it bounces off vwap and it rips right through well i want to know why that time it ripped through, not you know, not just oh okay, that's just percent trading percentages, which it is, right? Because nothing is 100%. But I want to know reasons why it didn't work, right? And that's what Bookmap tells you, you know, especially with the liquidity, the visible liquidity that you can see, and even more so with this <clears throat> with this new indicator that they have, um, you can see why things, why areas on your charts don't work, things like that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, again. I'm, it's gonna take me about a minute or two to get these back up. Uh, Brett, if you want to maybe just talk about a little bit about when you wrote the book and um, why you decided. To, I mean, because there were some pretty successful traders. I mean, granted, I was the number one trader for a couple of years there. But why did you choose me to to you know put in your book and you know sit behind? I mean, I know the other traders in your book as well. But why did you sit behind me and want to see what I was doing? Why did that intrigue you versus the other traders there? Well, well, it, it, it intrigued me because it was clear to me that it wasn't that you were playing the game better than other traders. It was that you were playing a different game. And I see that with successful portfolio managers and traders. In some ways, they're playing a different game. They're not just playing the same old game better than other people. In this case, like you were saying, you wouldn't even have charts of the market up. You were trading from order flow and able to make very, very quick decisions about who's buying, who's selling, what levels will hold, and so forth. 
not everyone has those quick thinking pattern recognition skills, but some people have it as their gift, to use your word, Scott. And that's what intrigued me, was someone who had a particular cognitive gift, a gift in terms of processing information, uh, who was using it very successfully. A huge part of your development, and I'm speaking now to the people attending the webinar, a huge part of your development is figuring out what your gifts are. Where are your strengths, not only personality-wise, but your information processing strengths? What do you see well? What do you visualize well? What do you think well? What, what do you, how do you make sense of the world in unique and distinctive ways? If you can figure out your strengths as a thinker, your cognitive strengths, that will tell you what your strengths will be as a trader. Right, and that's what I stress too. When I, you know, when I go through these examples, um, you know, when I'm talking about what I look at, what I do, how I interpret the markets, it's not for you know traders to copy. You, you, traders have to figure out what works for them, and then you know then come up with different strategies using book map with their areas and the things they look at. Um, so, you know, it's not to trade like me, you know, even when I do my mentoring, with my students, I explain to them, you have, you have to figure out what works for you and then you implement the, the real time volume um, to, you know, figure out if the areas that you're looking are looking at are relevant. Um, so that, that's what, that's a big thing that I stress, you know, you don't, you, if you want to be a successful trader, you cannot copy other traders, right? I mean, you can, try to find the same levels as them but you, you have to come up with something that makes sense to you right so when i was a scalper that made sense to me like you're saying dr brett but you know and now the way i look at the markets now with the book map that makes sense to me so everyone has to come up with their own ideas um especially if you're using bar charts and implementing the, the real-time value um all right so i'm going to try to get back on track here I, I cannot believe this happened again bruce i mean this literally while i'm talking all my all my charts disappear so now i'm now I'm flailing here, but so I'm going to briefly go through um, just very briefly because all the other webinars I've done are you know kind of redundant. If I keep going over the same stuff, even though you know it's obviously very relevant, but I'm just going to go because I want to get try to get to the new stuff here uh, quickly. Um, so <clears throat> the first couple webinars I've done, um, you know, and how I've learned to use Bookmap is looking at you know, how markets respond to resting liquidity in the book, right? So resting, for those of you that are new to book map that don't know, um, so that, you know, this orange red ish, again, I'm colorblind and that's why my, you know, the defaults on book map are green and red, uh, I believe, and I've changed it to blue and red just because I can't tell the difference, but that's why mine are blue. And um, so if I'm wrong on colors, I apologize, but uh, you know, this, the, this liquidity lines are basically resting orders in the book um that you can also see on the you know on the dome but when you just look at the dome it's fleeting right so anyone that tells you they can make money just trading off the dome orders is either lying or is you know holy that's my opinion right you gotta remember this is how i used to trade i used to trade off of the dome and if i can't make sense of it i and i have very fast processing skills as dr brett can attest if i can't make sense of it i there's not many people in the world i don't think that can make sense of it so my point is this information is what's in the book, but it's a lot easier to discern looking at it here. And it makes a lot more sense when you take the rest in liquidity and then you add in what's really happening with, you know, the, the market orders, right? So, you know, what you see in these bubbles is just basically orders um, that are market orders, right? So we call them aggressive buyers, aggressive sellers, meaning they're not waiting to get filled. Like th these orders are waiting to get filled and they're passive. They're just sitting in the book waiting. When you see the bubbles, those are the active, aggressive sellers in the red, buyers in the blue, right? So when you can kind of meld everything together is in these levels where there's resting liquidity and then see how the sellers are trying to push it through and then they fail, try to push it through and then they fail. That's And then you, you, you tie that into a level you're looking at in a chart that's important to you, that's when you get high percentage trades, right? And I always stress, that you're wanting, you know, when you're taking these trades, you're not going to be very successful and you're not going to be around very long, in my opinion, especially with the algorithms that dominate 
um, you know, in the marketplace now, trying to take one to one on your trades, meaning you're risking one to make one or even even two to one, my opinion. So you want to find areas in your chart that are validated by the by the volume where you can risk a little to make multiples, right? So you're risking, you know, one to make five, one to make 10. That's how successful traders make money. Again, unless you can write programs that are ultra fast, the, you know, most of the retail traders have to be taking multiples on their trades. So this is just a, a basic, you know, what I've talked about in the past where, you know, market comes down to resting liquidity right here. Um, and it also gravitated to the high liquidity, which I'll go over here in a second, which I've talked about in the last webinar, um, which is just is in, just shockingly all, almost always does. And I'll explain why uh, it's not coincidence, but so it comes down here, they try to sell through, they lose, comes back down here again, they try to sell again, lose again. I mean, it doesn't, they don't push it lower and then you see liquidity put back in, right? So this, this right here in, in my eyes and in actuality is a great trade because they tried to push it through, they lost, they tried again, lost again, and liquidity comes back in. So now you can kind of lean on liquidity and this, the minute you start seeing the buying, you can get long, put a stop below here and ride it up until you see a reason to get out, right? And that's the other thing um, Dr. Brett, I'm sure sees all the time is, is one of my biggest, and I'll even show you an example later, it's one of my biggest faults is getting out just because you have a profit, right? You, you want to get out just like you get in. You want to have a reason that you're getting out, not just because you see your P&L ripping higher, right? So again, you know, when you're getting in, when you're getting in, you have to have a reason to get in when you're getting out, you know, you want to have a reason to get out. And it could be whatever reason, again, makes sense to you. It could be, say it came up to this liquidity right here and they tried to buy through and then you start to see some sellers, that's a reason to get out. But, you know, there's there's many reasons to get out. But my point is, you're not just, you want to use this information both ways. You don't just want to use it for entries. You want to use it for exits as well. As well. So so that's a, the basic, um, you know, the, the, the first thing, I mean, first few webinars that I did, I what I talked about, um, which this alone will make you a much, much better trader than just obviously looking at bar charts, right? And uh, then, Scott, can I jump in? Can I jump in, Scott? Absolutely. Yeah, so this rings true to me in terms of the edges I'm seeing from the traders I'm working with, both the active portfolio managers and the active prop traders. What you're looking at on that one chart is a, an occasion where Selling comes in and selling comes in and selling comes in. You can see the selling, you can see the levels. And at some point, the sellers cannot push the market lower. Those sellers are trapped. When we get buying coming in, because the market can't go any lower, those sellers have to cover, they end up puking, and that fuels the movement higher. And conversely, we get occasions where the buyers come in, the buyers come in, the buyers come in and can't push the market higher. They become trapped. Some of the best short-term edges in the market is seeing clearly where buyers and sellers are trapped and getting ahead of them for the next move as they have to exit their positions. Are you there, Scott? You're yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I put myself on mute when he was talking. Um, and exactly, that's exactly right. And so the next thing I'm going to cover is what I talked about on my last my last webinar. And Dr. Brett, you know, since he's since he was in his early King Street days, he's worked with you know many hedge funds, um, just, you know, big money traders, and I'm sure he can attest to what you know I mentioned last time. And what I'm going to talk about again today briefly, and the reason I, I know this, well, let me show you some examples first. And again, I'm sorry if these, uh, if I'm kind of scrambled here because I've had to bring everything up last second. But what I talked about last time is a good way, you know, when, when the market opens, one, you want to have a plan, right? You want to have an idea of what, uh, how you want to trade the market that day based on, you know, whether, whatever you look at, right? So the thing that I do is, you know, on certain days, it, it's screaming what the market is going to do, right? So this is an example of, it helps you build your thesis for the day. So this is an example of 
the QQQ, which is, I highly recommend, that's the other thing I talk about too, for e even uh, guys that just trade futures, you're doing yourself a disservice by not having these, the ETFs up, right? Because you can glean so much more information from what the ETFs are doing with the volume and everything else than just looking at a at, at the futures. It's the same with just looking at a bar chart versus having a bar chart and book map, right? So you want to start to look at these ETFs if you're trading these markets because it gives you information that the regular futures a lot of times don't have, right? So when I bring up in the morning, I'll bring up my, my charts or the book map and I'll immediately look at the ETFs right when the market opens and I want to see where the liquidity comes in resting liquidity, right? So which I've talked about before, a, a novice uh, book map user and it, and it makes sense but that's why most things don't make sense in trading it's usually the opposite but you look you look at this and you say wow look at all the resting bids here i, I think we're going up for the day i mean let's look, let's look at all the support right this is real time support yes and no right so the no is from my experience and the reason i say my experience because i used to do this exact thing when i was a huge trader i mean at, at, at my height i can put on 3000 e mini s p contracts right so i would load the book in areas that i wanted to get long with bids right and then i would wait for my opportune time and then i would push the market into my own orders right so this is exactly what's happening here in my in my eyes where you get this big money that puts in their orders right at the open and then they want to get filled here so again this big money can't just come in and buy millions of contracts because hundreds of thousands or millions of contracts because they'll run the they'll, they'll run the market right off the screen so they have to do it in a more covert way where they you know they wait for their for their moment and then they push the market into their orders then they get long or they get out of their short position whatever the reason is and then then when you see it kind of struggling after it trades through here and all these big traders got filled then you start to see some buying that's when you can get long right so that's what i'm trying to explain is you this is very key in knowing where the liquidity is in the book um knowing again i so i look at this chart for this particular day and my thesis is we're going lower before we go higher if we go higher right so this was the qqq this is all the same day um this was the spy right so you had the liquidity here this when you see this this is algorithms right this is also good to know which happens a lot especially in the spy where they're just they put it in pull it put it in pull it put it in pull it so you know this this stuff isn't relevant uh for trade my trading it's just games being played by the algos this is relevant this these are orders that have been there since the open 6 30 my time is 8 30 central i'm in arizona um where these orders want to get filled and when you start seeing them the same look in every market then you have a very good idea of what's going to happen that day then you look for areas to get short to run into those orders and then then you can kind of judge when it gets here you know whether you're going to get out or let it ride or things like that um so that's the spy this is the vix which obviously moves um opposite you know if the if the, start, if the markets go down usually vix rises so you can see all the all the orders are above in the vix this is the vxx the, the etf um but again everything's aligned right so you can come up with a very good thesis of i want to be short today um until this happens right so then lo and behold turns around takes this is qqq takes out this 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 hey look at that the very last liquidity level got filled and then we rally right so basically whoever these guys were firm one firm multiple firms they got what they wanted they pushed it down into their orders now they're either long or they got it other shorts whatever the reason maybe it doesn't matter what the reason is you know that the market was going to gravitate to this liquidity at very high percentage again nothing in, tr in trading is 100 percent, right but you are on the right side of the market if you look at all these different markets and you see this liquidity resting you know where the market's going to probably end up again i say 80 percent of the time that's probably not accurate i mean in my opinion what i've seen so far with this it's been about 80 percent but again nothing's 100 percent. the point is you're on the right side of the market you have a very good indication on what's going to happen right so that was that was the cues um this was Can I just jump in real quickly sure. uh, because this pains to the psychology of the marketplace itself uh, what you're seeing here are the intentions of large market participants 
when they have resting orders that stay in the book, that's their intention. These aren't things that they're putting on and pulling and pull, putting on and pulling out of the book. These are levels where they want to get involved and you can see that on the screen, which helps you then with your decision making. Right, exactly. And, that, and that's exactly what I say. I mean, again, Brett, you, you're the, you've worked with the big funds. I mean, what would happen if a, if a huge trader at a big fund just turned around and wanted to get long and then just decided they wanted to chase the market and at any cost? Would he be in a little bit of hot water that he didn't wait for view app or wait for, you know what I mean? I mean it, they obviously just don't dump their orders in the market. They have to be more discreet. In getting That's right, because they would just blow out the bid offer spread uh, and they'd end up chasing bad prices. Um, example I use when I uh, first, after I was in Chicago, when I first uh, joined Tudor, the hedge fund in, in Connecticut, the minimum portfolio size for an established trader was $200 million. And so they had so much, that was the minimum. So they had so much capital, each portfolio manager has so much capital that they have to execute the orders over time. And they have to try to get good prices for those orders. And that's what you see in the order book. Right, exactly. So again, if you have an idea of, where the big money is that's what you want that's how you want to trade and then you want to see how it trades when it gets to those orders right so this was the this was the spy that i showed um these kind of lightened up because this is all relative so there was monster once this, you know when when the market opened these were really bright orange but then when this this came in right around 9 30 my time um then this made this these lighter um because that's another great thing to figure out when you, you can just glance at it and know relatively, hey, is this volume more than this volume, more than this volume, instead of trying to figure it out from the, from the order book, right? So regardless, when this came in, this lightened these up, but you can see these got filled, this area got filled, and then this area got filled, and once this got filled, lo and behold, gone. And then, of course, we rallied, you know, that, that day, or this is right at the close. So um, what I want to show next is, Okay, so now I want to move move on to the. Oh, I just want to show this quickly. Um, I got to bring it up, but so make no mistakes, right? Nothing is is clear 100% of the time in trading, right? You're going to have days that are range, right? Where you where you pull up the order book and you don't see, you know, you don't see this. It's not as clear, right? And I'm going to show you here. So this is a range day. This was on. Uh, 419 you bring up this is the same thing bring up the queue okay now which way are you leaning this tells me that this is going to be a range day right i'm thinking these might get, get filled these might get filled right How, which way are they, is it going first don't know you can use other means to figure it out but my point is don't think that every day is going to be just this layup where you look at the etfs and look at the futures and see all the liquidity on one side and look at the vix and you know you can base a perfect thesis some most days are going to be like this where you can't make a decision right so um i'll show you the spy here too real quick i'm sorry all my charts were up until my computer crashed but i mean look at this this is not clear right so on days like this you just lighten up or you back off go golf whatever the, the point is that's another misconception out there that great traders make money every day great traders do not make money every day and, and i actually had this fallacy when I started to trade longer term, and when I mean longer term, I mean like minutes instead of seconds, right? Because when I was at my height, when I was making you know millions of dollars, I was making money every single day. Like if I had a losing day, I was distraught. And it took me a long time to realize when you're trading more of a swing type trade, you know, whether it be minutes, hours, whatever, you're not gonna have winning days every single day. So you, the days that it's not clear like this, you just wanna back off, right? You don't wanna, you don't wanna be taking stands if you can't figure it out which way you want to trade and have confidence in, in that, right? The great traders, you know, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and then they have these huge outsized days. And Brad, again, I'm sure you can attest to this for your hedge funds too. Absolutely, Scott. And you, you know, what really strikes me and what you're showing is that good market information doesn't just tell you which trades to place. Good market information tells you when you shouldn't be trading. And you can wait, wait, wait with patience for the clear setups, and then you can put them on 
with meaningful size so that uh, you can do quite well. Right. And I wanted to show this example just to show that everything's not always sunshine and rainbows, right? So it's like, there's going to be days you're confused. Those are the days you back off, period. I mean, it's, it's common sense. Most traders, again, they it doesn't hit them till after they have a huge losing day in a market like this where they're getting whipsawed. This is, these are the days that the algos love. They are waiting for the retail trader to get in there so they can rip your head off going back and forth whipsawing you, right? So again, if you can recognize days like this before they happen, you can lighten up, you can back off or whatever. So, you know, so you have your all your bullets available to fire at a market that is all that is aligned with everything else. So that that's my point there. So now <clears throat> I want to get into um, the new indicator. Bre or, um, Bruce, have there been any questions or anything you want to want me to cover quickly before I get into the new stuff? Um, yeah, there's there's a list of questions. Um, I'm kind of going through and, and, and answering um, some of them. Uh, you, you've kind of answered them along the way. Um, I, I, guys, I don't know if we're going to have enough time to get through a lot of the questions. Unfortunately, I will put Scott's email uh, into the chat for you. You can reach out to him directly uh, to ask questions. Uh, so uh, that might be the best way because like Scott's going to show something unique here uh, and interesting. I think you guys really want to hear. And I, I don't want to take time away from that. So uh, uh, why, why, don't, why don't you just uh, continue on, Scott? I think that might be best. Okay, yeah, again, I'm trying to, I've got so many examples, not so many, but it's just, it's just of course, discombobulated because my, oh, my chart shut down. But so <clears throat> what I want to show you is a new indicator um, that just, I mean, it's been out for a while, which is even more amazing. It's an MBO indicator. And again, Bruce is going to go over it a little bit after what it is, but I'm just going to give you my, you know, basic common sense breakdown, making it simple, which what you should do with trading, obviously, where um, this, this indicator shows you where the stops and where the icebergs are being fired off. Um, so this is only CME data um, and the corresponding, you know, so obviously crude's NYMEX, but it, it trades under the CME so you can get the data there. And it's only through rhythmic. Again, Bruce will go through all of this, but I, I want I just want to go over kind of what this tells you and why it's so why it's basically 100 percent accurate, not 100 percent accurate from a trading standpoint, as far as knowing that these are stops versus regular orders, these are icebergs versus regular orders, because these orders have certain tags on them when they come through the market, um, which tell which tells the, the exchange. I mean, the exchange puts this out whether it's an actual iceberg that you put in or a stop, or just like when you put a stop in the market, that has a certain tag versus a market order, right? So that's how they can disseminate this this information. And now they've put it out for the general trader, general public, retail trader, which is game changing, right? So I've talked about since last October when I started doing webinars for Bookmap, how it's the holy grail, right? In my opinion, this is the holiest of holy grails <laughs> added on to the holy grail, right? I mean, when you start to combine this information with your with the book map, with the resting liquidity, with what you're seeing in the charts, I mean, you are now, in my opinion, you are now on a level playing field with the big money, right? Because once I show you this, and I'll have Dr. Brett kind of touch on it, this is information that these quant funds, these big funds have had for years, right? And that's why they never lose. You always hear these uh, Goldman, Stocks, Goldman Sachs made money 198 out of 200 trading days in 2018. I mean, just ridiculous. And you're always thinking to yourself, like it's either fixed or they have information that the general public doesn't have, which up until a few years ago is exactly the case as far as I'm concerned. Um, and again, we can get in a little bit with Dr. Brett, but back in the day, they used to actually have counterparty information where you would be able to see exactly who you traded with. For a smaller trader, it's not that big of a deal, but when you're a big trader like me at the time when I was trading thousand lots, I would be, you know, if I jump up and take an offer, I would be able to see who that offer was as far as what house, right? So back then I had a nemesis um, at another firm that we would go head to head every day. It was like literally like a poker game. And I can see when I would buy a thousand, I can see 900 of them were this one firm. That's huge information to have when you're making your decisions, right? If I jump on my bot 900 and I see it's it's like Merrill Lynch that I've never, that I rarely see in the market, that gives me pause like, oh shit, I might be wrong here, pardon my language. but. Um, it's just it's just an advantage to know who you're trading with, right? So this is kind of like that kind of information that you can use for your trading. So let me let me go over here what this is. So <clears throat> this information shows 
stop runs and icebergs. So the icebergs are blue, stop runs are orange or red or whatever color this is, right? So when I say bid icebergs, so when you see this, the line go higher, that means there's resting bid orders in the book hidden, right? So with icebergs, for those of you who don't know what icebergs are, it's like a hidden order where you just have to display a certain percentage and I don't know the exact percentage, but you know, you say you have to put, say you have a hundred lot iceberg that you want to, that you want to put in the book. All you have to display is 10 lots of that hundred. And then you got another 90 behind it that they, that they have to sell through to have it go lower. So it's kind of like this little hidden game where, you know, there's a lot of different strategies to why, why people use icebergs. One of the reasons is a lot, a lot of times firms don't want to show how much they really have to get off, right? You know, they don't want to show, I need to buy 20,000 contracts here. So they put in you know, 500 and the behind it is 19,500, which is significant information if the market keeps plowing into that order and it looks like 500 and it just, market keeps spinning at that price and all the, you know, when you're watching it on the order book, you don't know what the hell's going on. When you see it on here, then you're like, oh, okay, well, that's it. There was a huge iceberg order there, which affects the market, right? So if you're, just think of it, if you're, if you're, a, you know, a big player and you want to sell, you want to sell through this area, and you start selling, selling the shit out of it. You just keep selling, 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 and the thing's not going lower. All you see there is a hundred, but you're selling. You just sold two thousand, and it didn't move lower. What's going on, right? This is what's going on. There are resting hidden iceberg orders, you know, below. I want to say below the market, like hidden orders. When I say below, so this the blue shows you where they're basically taking them. So these are passive icebergs taking. The sellers so these are aggressive sellers selling into the passive buyers the passive icebergs right so this is one type of passive buyer where you can see this is you can see this liquidity this is a different type of passive buyer where you can't see it but you can see it with this information which is huge right so that's that the the, the orange is uh her stops so it's a specific order. Everyone knows what a stop is because you have most traders have to trade with stops to get get the hell out of their position if they're wrong, right? So what this is telling you is these are big stop runs that are firing off, right? So the when I was talking about earlier the aggressive orders, the aggressive market orders, yeah, these are aggressive market orders, but they're stops, right? So why is that important information? Because when I see stops, I'm thinking the uninformed retail trader that doesn't know what the hell they're doing they're all puking at the same time this is not big money right so why it's important if you see stop runs there there's most of the time you're not seeing that's not big money that's not the that's not the player the the houses the firms the paper we call we call it paper I'll, I'll refer to it from now on that's not paper selling right so th this market most likely is going not most likely i mean a high percentage of the time is going there, there's nothing behind this the stop run, right? So th these aren't these aren't legitimate sellers. These are guys that are puking out of their position. That is incredible information to know when you're say say you want to get long or you're looking to get short and you see this, you're like, yeah, look look at these, you know, again, if you're just using book map, you see this, you're like, yeah, they're pounding this. But when you say here, like, oh wait, that's a stop run. That that's not informed traders. That's the the clown retail trader, which which I am at this point now too. So my point, I'm not making fun of anyone. I'm just telling you this is uninformed money. Then when you combine a stop run with what the smart money is doing, they're actually buying here passively. What does that tell you? That tells you that this market is probably, most likely, high percentage, not going to go lower lower at this point in time. So that is, you know, that is incredible information. So you can see here with this graph again. I just want to explain this. Uh, so you can see it here when it's happened in real time. This what this was more over here. This um, these gear chart thing here, but you know this shows you here but you can see over here what the quantity was right so this first stop run here i mean i'm sorry yeah the stop run here was about this is the orange or red it was over 200. the icebergs were you, you go to the left here you can see the blue it was about 250. And again and don't get confused um you know oh well i don't think 200 is a lot is a lot of size i don't think two, that's not enough to move this type of market just let the relativeness dictate what what it means right so when you start seeing the huge spikes that haven't been seen all day right so this is the biggest buy iceberg of the day this is the second biggest iceberg this is the biggest this is the second but look back where do you see anything like that you don't 
right? So this tells you, I don't care what size it is, relatively, this was a lot of buy orders for, for this market at this time, right? So that's really important to know where you can just wait for these outsized icebergs to fire off. And then that's where you can, you know, you can build a playbook on that, it, that trade alone, you know, it, could, it doesn't, doesn't even have to have anything to do with your charts. Um, so that's what this information is telling you. Hopefully that's clear. Bruce again is going to go over a little bit at the end, and he's got the he's got that printout in the. If you go to the um, handout, you click on that. And there's another link that kind of shows you some examples as well, besides mine. Um, that'll be very helpful. But again, I'm available too. Um, all my information's in there to help you guys, you know, navigate through this. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, once you uh, Scott, you can I jump in? Yeah, please do so I can get my other charts going. Yeah, my audio uh, went off uh, for a minute there. I wasn't sure what was going on. But um, think of it this way. When you can see the icebergs, when you can see the sell stop runs, it's like seeing the other players at the poker table. The smart ones, the not so smart ones. These are tells that you see around the poker table to read the intentions of the participants. And by seeing the intentions of the more sophisticated and less sophisticated participants, you can make more educated trading decisions. Oh, by far, absolutely more. Again, nothing is 100%, right? And I'm gonna show you some examples here on when the icebergs were actually wrong going the other way, but I can show you how you can utilize that as information as well right so why i showed you this example was because you know when you're just using book map this is the same area right so you're using the rest of liquidity this looks good they can't get it through just like what i showed earlier right but then when you add in your stop information right now you have this information that you already know anyone who's been already using book map now you tie in the <laughs> the stops that are fake fake money in my opinion, you know, that's not going to continue the move most of the time or a high percentage of the time. And then you add in icebergs. So now, now you have resting liquidity that's failing at, you know, there's icebergs there, you know, the big money is buying here with icebergs. I mean, you, you don't get a better, a better signal signals for trade as far as, you know, percentage, high percentage trading and risk reward, right? Because if you get long here, the minute you see this start to buy, say you wanted to get in right away, all you got to do is buy when you see the blue and put put your stop below the red. It's the, I mean, it's literally that simple in, where, as far as controlling your risk, right? Because you know if this thing turns around, which it did, but but it didn't get through here again, right? So if this thing turns around and sells off and these icebergs are wrong, you know, you, you want it, you're getting out. You're not risking a lot to get in this trade, right? You're risking maybe 20 ticks, which is not a lot in crude these days. But and then, and then you catch you catch a huge, you know, you catch a 40 tick move. So the point is you can you can gauge your risk reward by not just the rest you know the rest of the liquidity but the the iceberg orders so hopefully that's clear as i get in you know i'll do give a couple more examples um and i'll show you it, it might be more clear um let me see here okay so this is um this is the nasdaq from 413 um at the so you can see here this is stops, this is the opposite icebergs, right? So this means when you see it going lower, that means paper, again, I'm referring to paper as big, big money. Paper is selling, it's a bear iceberg, right? So you get a stop run coupled with a bear iceberg, lo and behold, it's a top, right? So you had actual selling. So th this is also, this is also pretty um, interesting where you see buy stops firing off, but you see red, that's, there's something amiss here, meaning the big money is aggressively selling here too. So it should be blue. And what I'm saying is if you see stop runs, most of the time you're gonna see them, you know, it's a it's a buy stop run because this is going higher, this, you know, this is going up, you would see blue. Here, not only do you see the red aggressive sellers, now you also see that the hidden icebergs are selling too. That turned out to be a top. Comes back, test that area, doesn't get through, fails, right? So even if you don't get aggressive right here, you can say, okay, I'm gonna wait for a retest and see what happens, then I'm gonna get in, right? Perfect trade here. Same thing happens here. You get another stop run, meaning the uninformed trader is puking out. Um, was a top. I mean, it wasn't really an iceberg here, but it was. There was a you know, just telling you that is this buying real or is it is it is it being real? Is it big money or is it the uninformed trader? That tells me. Okay, be aware that if, if I want to get long, 
I'm, I'm not, you know, this is not what I want to see. I want to see the big money coming into the market. And it, lo and behold, it stops pretty much where it did before, right here, right? Turns around, sells off. Now I'll get into this in a second. So I know some traders are, and this is wh where paper was wrong. And I'm gonna show you this here in an example in a, in a second, where it came down and then now you have some buy icebergs here and it failed, right? So again, this is not, nothing is 100% in, in, in trading. But now that you know the area that traded, that failed, that's that's good information. So I'll show you this a little closer up here in a second. But then again, you have another stop run. You have a little bit of icebergs, but just just the uninformed trader tries, you know, this is not real buying once again into the resting liquidity, fails again. So again, this is telling you what is really happening. That this buying at the at the at these times is not real buying. It's just stops. It's not the big money that wants to that wants to enter in the market. That's really good information to know. Um, and then here, you know, this very first time, this is the, the biggest of this whole move. This was, and in this area held multiple times, this was the houses getting short or the paper getting short. So for you, those of you looking at this spike, which was the highest buy spike of them all in, the, in this example that I have on the chart here, um, let's see if I could pull it up here, if I have it. Um, of course I don't, let me, Brett, do you want to, uh, chime in on that at all while I pull up this other example? Yeah, yeah, Scott. You know, when we see an iceberg that does not absorb the selling or buying, uh, it, it tells us something about the market conditions at that time. That too is information. All the iceberg is telling you is what the large market participant is doing and what they are hiding. The question is, do they have enough power to be able to contain the moves that would fill the orders? And as you point out, Scott, sometimes the icebergs get run over. Sometimes orders from the big participants get pulled because they see new participation roaring into the market and that's what creates some volatility that's what creates some big moves so right. it's information too when the icebergs can't contain the selling or buying flows right exactly so th this is exactly what i was saying you know what dr brett was talking about here where you know this was a big iceberg by iceberg meaning they were taking they were, they were you know resting bids or hidden bids that were taking the sell sell move here, but you can see where this spike it went right through it, right? So again, nothing is 100% in trading. Paper is not always right, but you have an area now where you know paper took a stand. That is a significant area, or could be, right? And I'm going to give some examples here in the ES too, where you can see this, right? So they were wrong. So even if you did buy here, first of all, I I wouldn't have bought. Again, a lot of these are not. Most of these examples are not trades I took because I'm I'm learning the iceberg too. I've only had it for a few weeks, but I, I you know I go back and I look and I say okay this is this is area. So even if I was even if I saw this iceberg, I'm not buying here because I don't see I don't see any blue coming in till down here and that's all, already through. But you can see here this comes through here this this rips through here. This is where the iceberg was. It comes up. It tries to buy through that area. Fails. Boom. So this this area is significant. Tries it again, turns around, sells. So I mean, this looks like a, a small move, but this is this is you know 40 point move in the Nasdaq, right? So again, if you wanted if you wanted to say, okay, this iceberg failed, I want to see what it does when it comes back. The second this fails, meaning they try to buy it, the selling comes back in. I'm short right here. I'm going to write it down here until I see buying. You would have caught yourself a 20, 30 point move. But why this is significant now is because remember, always remember the areas and, and take note of these areas where paper was wrong and it stopped once it got through here now look at this so when it finally did get through where this initial iceberg was now that could be a long signal again you have to come up with your own ideas after watching this these are just a few of the ideas that i've come up with so far where it broke through and then lo and behold look when it came back look where it held right, right in that area right so it's like once the paper was right again or once it got back above this now that's the you know the, the age old adage is support becomes resistance resistance becomes support so this was resistance the minute when it blew through here now when it came back and they couldn't get it back through this area here now you can get long 
right? So this I have right here, now support. So my whole point in this is it is not 100% and you're gonna find areas that paper is wrong, but you can still take advantage of it is, is what I'm saying. With this information, this is incredible. So um, my next example is, let's see if I can, again, sorry that this is so convoluted now, but, um, Okay, so this is the immuni &E S&P, where this is a really good example, where it comes through resting liquidity, resting liquidity, again, meaning visible liquidity in the book, visible liquidity in the book. Now look what happens. Huge iceberg spike, it's close to 1,000. What I've noticed so far, um, you know, in the immuni &E S&P, if you get close to 1,000, that, that's a lot. That, that's something to, to take note of, right? So I see 1,000 icebergs, I see a five, so this is by far the biggest iceberg of the day, right? You can see here, look, look at the icebergs up until here, boom. Then nothing after that. So that's significant, right? And then you couple that with a, I'm gonna call it dumb money, okay? And I'm the dumb money nowadays too, so don't take offense to it. The dumb money's selling, meaning that's not a sustainable selling in my opinion, that's not paper selling. That's 513, which is a lot for stops, right? So you got those two combined in this area, that was resting liquidity that you can see this is a high 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 percentage trade again doesn't mean it's gonna be 100 percent but you take a trade here you know you see buying start to come in and once it runs away from here you could put your stop just below here and you cut you catch a you know a, almost a 40 point trade here right so up in the vwap even if you wanted to get up a vwap it still is a 30 point trade so this is a good example of you know, extremes. And again, you're going to have to play with this yourself. With my opinion so far, you know, you get up 800, 1,000 icebergs in the E mini S&P. That's a lot. That's something you need to take note of, especially if you're running into resting liquidity that's visible. These are all, you got to remember this. These are all areas that 95 plus percent of the traders, retail traders, they do not have this information, right? They don't even have this information, let alone this information. Now, when you combine it, um, it it's incredible. So let me show you what that look like on a chart, I already showed that, um, here we go. So this is what I mean about coming up with your own ideas uh, as far as you know what you look at in a chart, it could be anything, right? So I'm gonna give you a couple of different examples here and I know Dr. Brett's gonna like my one here with the tick extreme, but so this was the same area, right? This is this area on a bar chart, right? So first of all, if you're looking at a bar chart, how do you know this is gonna be the low? You don't, right? You're just guessing and say, so what I have here, again, I make trading as simple as possible. I use the VWAP. I use the, uh, they call this a daily value area, which is a two standard deviations away from VWAP, which I've learned from SMB Trading, Merritt Black. He's a great resource if you guys wanna learn the future side as far as you know charting and stuff like that and um, you know, value areas. But all these lines are, the middle, this blue line, I think it's blue or purple, is VWAP. Uh, most people know what that is. Now you do is Google, it'll be explained. And then these are the standard deviations. So my point is, if you were buying v, just the standard deviation, the, the daily value area low, we call it, right here, you were wrong, you were wrong, and then you were finally right, right? So why was this area significant if you don't know anything else? You don't, you're just guessing. You're taking loss, loss, and then you get lucky here in, as far as bar chart reading, right? So this, here I have a DVA low here. So the point is when you can use real-time volume to know, okay, now this DVA low is in conjunction with real-time volume in the book, icebergs going off, stop runs going off. This gives you an incredibly high high uh, trade or high percentage trade. The other thing I wanna show here, and Dr. Brett is a big proponent of the tick, which he should be. This was the extreme of the day. Of the, I had, this is a little moved over, but this area was, was this, right? So a lot of times when you see extremes, that's a reversal, right? So if you're just trading bar charts alone, this is a pretty high percentage trade. You gotta move in the DBA, for the third time, you get a tick extreme. You can, you most traders are going long there. Then when you tie in that extreme with this, you're, you know, it, it's incredible. This incredible information. Um, and then one last thing, I'll let Dr. Brett talk a little bit about the tick because I know he loves the tick. Um, this was this exact low here was the exact low before this humongous move, right? Th that's just telling you this is not coincidental right? This is big money that got long, that was right. The My point is, take note of this area when this market comes back 
down here. You know, again, a bar chart trader has no idea. Yeah, it was a lower low. They might be looking at this, but you know, as a book map user, that this low corresponded with some monster volume, huge icebergs, take note. So when this market eventually comes back down here, take note of this area just from what you learned today. It could be a huge setup, whether it's a long or even if it breaks through, that's information as well, if it breaks through on the downside. So Brett, you wanna to touch on the uh, tick a little bit or? Yeah, yeah, Scott, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Um, so the tick tells you how many stocks in the New York Stock Exchange universe are trading on upticks minus the number trading on down ticks at any time. To get a number like negative 1148 means you just have to have massive selling across a broad range of issues. So there's puking, puking, puking. They're selling just about everything. That's a really extreme value. And so when you get some of these extreme tick values and you can't make a new low or you can't hold a new low, uh, that becomes useful information. Other useful information is looking at what sectors of the market are doing while these icebergs are going off, while this negative tick is going on. For instance, at the absolute market low from the recent decline, the, the low we had in February, we hit 2200 something in the S&P. Actually, <clears throat> on that day where we made the new low, there were fewer stocks, fewer individual stocks making fresh lows on a one month basis. In other words, there's puking, 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 lots of selling, but certain sectors, certain shares are holding up. That's useful information when you combine that with what you're seeing in the order flow and what you're seeing with the icebergs. Yeah, exactly. So again, I, I give these different examples because some, and I'm going to show you an actual trade I took. Some traders trade off the tick. Some traders trade off VWAP, standard deviation. Some trade off of, you know, the point is you can utilize the real-time information with anything that you look at and, and be a much, much higher percentage trader. That's the point, right? Not that my, you know, my strategy or my the way I trade is right versus yours. What is right is what's really happening in the market. And that's what this that's what Bookmap tells you. Um, so I'll just go over quickly a couple other um couple other examples of the icebergs. Um I showed that. Okay, so this was actually a good um it's a good example of everything wrapped up into one. Um what did I already show this? This one I already showed. Yeah, I already showed this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so this is this was that area where, you know, you had the you had the icebergs and then you had stop runs. Oh no, this this is this is a different this is a different chart. So quickly, same exact type of look, right? So th this is perfect. This shows both ways, right? So here, they try to, they try to sell, icebergs buy it, moves up, comes back, lo and behold, holds right there, right, right here, holds. This is a significant area. That's why, because that's where the icebergs took a stand. This is an, uh, this is NQ. So say so say I, I see this, it rips up. I'm like, okay, I'm not chasing. I'm gonna wait for it to come back and then get long and see if it holds, which it does. Right here, I would get long right here, stop right here. Now I'm long, right? Now where am I getting out? Okay, say my strategies. I get out when I I don't get out until I see a stop run or icebergs. Perfect example. Here's moves higher, moves higher. Wait, is this is this real buying or is this the uninformed trader? Oh, it's a huge stop run. Okay, now now I got to pay attention. Doesn't mean you have to get out right away, but you start seeing some selling, you might want to rethink your you know your profit potential and, and maybe get out. Then you combine here's a here's an iceberg, here's a selling resting offers iceberg, big buying, aggressive buying, right into an iceberg. Hey, look at that, stop, down, comes back. Hey, look at that. That's exactly where the market stopped. Again, a lot of these times, you don't have to be aggressive right here. You can wait for retest, then get short, right? Just to confirm what you're seeing. Stops, retest, goes down. Then here's another example of icebergs wrong. Icebergs tried to buy right here, right through it. So again, just because you see the iceberg doesn't mean you just blindly jump in I and mean, you can do whatever you want. It's your money. If you're aggressive, you can jump in. But when I see icebergs firing off, I want to see them right. I want to see the regressive buyers come back in. This is straight through. Now this tells me, okay, I can't wait for this area 
you know, either I get, I'm going to get short right here. I'll put my stop right here, or I wait and see a retest and see what it does. And you can see it came back. I don't have the rest of the chart here, but short term it came back right in this area, started to turn around again. So this is a really good example of all, you know, all the different the stops, the icebergs, icebergs being right, icebergs being wrong, right? So again, it's just relevant information. Whether they're right or wrong, it's still relevant information. Even if you take a loss, your next winner is going to be five to one type of thing, right? And that's what you want with trading. Um, uh, Scott, can I jump in? Absolutely. Uh, if you could keep that, if you could keep that chart up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so here's a general rule. It's an approximate rule that I have found helpful. Remember I mentioned that a lot of the edges we're seeing on the intraday basis are buyers who are trapped who have to sell, sellers who are trapped who have to buy. If you look at the amount of volume that is trapped, that will be proportional to the next move in the other direction. So in the chart you see here, there's a fair amount of buying volume that's trapped. And so the first down move where we see that first iceberg doesn't hold. There's too much buying volume trapped. We need to go lower. So looking at not only who is trapped, the buyers or sellers, but how much is trapped can give us some estimates as to the magnitude of the coming move. Exactly, love it, absolutely. And by the way, this is real trading psychology, not just a bunch of would-be psychologists telling you to uh, relax and control your emotions. I mean, please. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know uh, what I'm saying. Oh, I know what you're saying. Dr. Brett had many uh, episodes of me when I was a younger trader of losing my mind and breaking screens and things like that. So I've, luckily I've become a little more mature in my older age, but uh, Dr. Brett's seen it all, which is, uh, we were reminiscing last night about it, some of my uh, episodes, but, you know, trading is emotional. It's really emotional if you don't know what's going on. That's what triggers me when I don't know a reason. And I've somehow, some way become so much more calm with this program, and the reason is, I, it was a joke, because now I know what's going on, right? I get frustrated when I, I feel like I'm being taken advantage of and I don't know why, meaning when I have a losing trade, when I see what's happening, even when I'm wrong, at least it makes sense to me, right? That is huge, that is a huge leap in trading. When Even when you're wrong, as long as you can make sense of it, that's huge, right? Not Hey, this went through VWAP, this 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 bounced off VWAP, this bounced off VWAP. Oh, that ripped through VWAP this time. Oh, that's just trading. That's just percentages. Yes, it's percentages, but that again, I used that example earlier. That's not enough for me. I need to know why, right? And this tells you why majority of the time. Um, quickly, I'll do that's a great uh point. If I can just jump in, Scott. That's a great point. Just real quickly, I want to underline that many times the frustration that we feel in trading is because we don't understand what's going on and we don't understand what's going on because we're not looking at the right things exactly and that that's the key for me that is the absolute key um and hopefully some other traders are starting to see something here where they're like oh my god this is this is what i needed this for all these years so this is an actual trade i took um <clears throat> showing you so this is crude um so you can see here here's some selling um aggressive selling through liquidity again if, you, if you're if you're if you're just looking at book map alone you may say hey this is this might be a short here right and it could be uh, absolutely but when you tie in icebergs this move comes down here you see the buy iceberg so so look right here this was i didn't i, don't, I didn't take this trade but look here comes down look at the buy iceberg at the time it was the most of the day turns around rips away right and i have noticed that crude's been a lot more reliable with the icebergs as far as um, what I've seen so far, again, I'm pretty new to it too, two, three weeks, but I've already seen the, the incredible edge it provides. So anyway, this was an iceberg that I got long, comes down here. You see, this is what I wanted to see, right? Here's the uninformed stop run to the sell side. That That's good, telling me this is not real money pushing through this liquidity. These are stops. These are the clowns. And again, I'm one of the clowns. Um, and then you couple that with some iceberg buying that's a long signal, you know, as long as it can get above. And I didn't take it right away. I, I kind of waited for a retest. And then when I saw this liquidity come in again, 
I'm like, okay, I'm golden. I mean, not golden, but I have a very high percentage trade here. I'm willing to risk, you know, down to here. If it can break this, this at the time was like 20 ticks, 25 ticks or whatever. Um, I didn't think it was that much. But anyway, so I got long here. And then I'll show you what happened. So again, I didn't get out. My, my usual trading style, as I've learned to become a swing trader, try to become a swing trader, is it's real hard. You know, the minute things starts running my way, I mean, a lot of traders, most traders can attest to this. I want to get out for a profit, right? No, I tell myself I'm not getting out until I see something with the same reason I got in, right? So we come up here. This was, you know, a 70 tick move, 80 tick move. You see a stop run uh, to the upside, meaning this isn't real buying in my opinion at the time. Then I see the icebergs taking the orders. Perfect reason. Like right here, I kind of jumped the gun. <laughs> I'm still not a perfect trader, obviously. Um, but then when I started seeing the, the, the aggressive selling come in, then I was out, right? And then... Um, Trying to show you the. I just want to show you a couple of things here with this trade, then we can answer some questions. So this was the kind of scrunched together where you can kind of see the entry and exit. So this is where I got long. You see this huge liquidity come in. That's when I was like, okay, this is this is a really good area. I caught it up, and actually I got out, um, and then I missed. So it went a little higher, went up to here, and then the icebergs fired off on, on the downside again. And unfortunately, I was on the golf course, which not unfortunately, that's actually a good thing, but that was a very costly round because this thing turned around and sold off 50 straight ticks down with the same exact setup as I got long in. So um, the point is, but the thing is, I was proud of this trade because I got out for a reason. I mean, I made almost two grand on a three lot, which is a, a great trade, right? So um, it just show, goes to show you too, I'm not some you know monster trader like I used to be. I, I'm kind of just like in your boat where, you know, at, but the thing is, the more confident I get, especially with these tools, that's where I will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what happened when I was at King Street. I started trading ones and twos like everybody else, right? And then the more confident I became, then they were twos and fours, fours and eights. And all of a sudden I was trading 50 and 100, 100 and 200. So don't think that like I was just handed some huge size here, go jump in the market and see what you can do. I started just like you. The more confidence I got back then, the bigger I got, and this is the exact same thing. So, you know, a few months from now, this is going to be 60, uh, you know, 30 lot versus a three lot, just because the more I see this, the more I know it works, the bigger I'm going to trade. And that's how all traders should ramp up their size. Do you have anything to say about that, Dr. Brett, as far as, you know, gaining confidence? And, you know, I know a lot of these big firms talk about, you know, putting on, when, when you believe in something, you know, you need to take advantage of it and put on bigger size. Do you have any, any, anything about that? Well, you know, as, um, the, the folks I work with at SMB talk about consistency of profitability has to come before size. Consistency comes before magnitude of profitability. And so we work on small size, getting consistent and reading the market. And then once we have that consistency, that's when we can grow the size. Exactly, and that's exactly what I did. I mean, again, if I can do it, I did it back then. I'm going to do it again. Dr. Brett's been, been my biggest cheerleader for all these years, just waiting for something to get me back in the game. And, you know, he introduced me to Book Mac, like I said, like I said earlier. You know, I'm going to get there again, especially now that I feel that's how, again, I, I don't get paid to do these webinars. I do it because I'm so grateful to Dr. Brett Bruce in introducing me to this program. Like, it makes sense to me again, and I, I couldn't be more excited. Um, just quickly, I just want to show you in a bar chart what that looked like. So this is this move here for the bar chart traders, right? A lot of traders trade breakouts, right? So again, this was actually a pretty, at the time it looks great. Like right here it looks, oh, this is an easy trade, right? This is actually starting to frustrate me because it took an, over an hour for this to happen, right? But for instance, say you're, say you're a bar chart trader, say you like to trade breakouts, right? This is a perfect example of a balance area, meaning back and forth trade, you know, building up energy and say you like to take breakouts, right? Well, a lot of breakouts go like this and then fail, right? What could have given you the confidence that this was a legitimate breakout? Well, the real-time volume. You knew that this all happened. You knew icebergs took a stand. You saw the liquidity coming back in. The minute you see the big buying as a breakout, you're long, right? Most, nine, again, 95 plus percent of traders don't have this information. Yes, they take the trade. Yes, they were right, but why were they right? They were right because the real-time volume dictated what was right, not not some lines on a chart. 
And the other thing I want to point out too, kind of like the mini S&P, you notice how this area corresponded, that was right here. This was, it was retested the next day, 416. So this was 415 was the date that this all happened. You notice, comes back to the exact, that's why I have this, this alert here, comes back to the exact area. And then the next day opens up. Not that you could predict this move, my point is, there is a reason this happens. This area was relevant. There's something going on here. The point is, when this comes back, this comes back to this area, take note, right? You knew from your experience of looking at the icebergs and everything else that this was significant here. Let's see what happens when it comes back here. It's going to give you information. If it bounces, gives you information to be long. If it gets through, that's relevant information to be short. So again, there's so many different ways to trade this. You can, the whole reason I show you this stuff is what's what I look at, but to just show you, you can use multiple different things in what you're already doing and use this to enhance it to a point where you are now a profitable trader. That's all I got, <laughs> Bruce, a lot of breath here, but uh, any questions for Dr. Brett or I? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been just really just busy here trying to answer as many questions as I can. Um, there's some questions in general about, uh, you know, um, uh, some of your, uh, uh, you, you know what? What exactly are you looking for, like for a turnaround, um, and uh, trading into high liquidity? You see the stop iceberg tracker. Uh, you see the stops. You see the icebergs, uh, and then you know. And then what? Um, when you start to see the buyers start to come in on the other side, right? Right. So I mean, again, it depends on what you're comfortable with. If you want to be aggressive. And you see this fire off, you can get you can get along right here. But I've showed examples um, where the buyers weren't able to step up and these icebergs were wrong and it ripped right through. I, from my trading, I need to see some aggressive buyers, meaning blue bubbles, start to come in. Then I know, okay, the buyers are starting to fight back a little bit. I don't I don't want to be getting long just because of an iceberg. I want to see real-time buyers kind of fighting back as well. That's what I personally want to see. You can, again, it's your money. You do whatever you want. If you want to, every time the iceberg fires off, you want to fade, you want to go on that side, you'll probably be a high percentage trader. I just think it's more high of a percentage to be getting long when I see the, the aggressive volume, meaning the blue bubbles come in my favor of what I've seen here. So I knew the icebergs were bullish. I want to see some bullish real-time volume. And that's what I saw. And that's why you see my entry right here, because that's right where I saw the volume come in. Right. Put your stop and Scott, here. if I could just jump in here, sure. what you're saying is absolutely right. You don't want to necessarily catch the falling knife, but you'll see the blue bubbles come in. If you're looking at that NYSE tick that we talked about, you would see uh, a decrease. Uh, it, the level of downside tick it starts. You're making higher lows. You can't. Ha you don't have as many stocks ticking down over time and then the tick will turn positive. And it's that transition in the tick, which corresponds to those blue bubbles, that tells you not only did you have an iceberg absorbing the selling, now you have initiative buying going on. And because enough volume is trapped, you can afford to wait for that buying and ride it higher. Exactly, exactly. I mean, Again, you, you got to use, I mean, ticks for, tick does, the crude does trade off the tick a lot as well, but, you know, ticks for the indices or, uh, you know, E-mini, S&P and NASDAQ as well. But, you know, again, you don't even, that that's just extra information that just helps enhance your trading probability. But again, I, the, back to the question, I just look for some real time. I know these guys, you know, I know this move here was pretty much fake. I knew that, I know the big money's taking the orders. I want to see some real time buying come in. And then I'm gone. I don't always have to see resting liquidity. This was just, this just helped. I should have actually put on more. Once I saw the balance area breakout, like I showed you, I should have even put on more, right? Because this is one of my signals. But I was long and, you know, again, I'm just, I'm kind of just learning the icebergs as well. And I don't want to fire and have a huge losing day when, if I'm not seeing things correctly. So again, this just helped enhance my trade. Um, but that's what I look And for. one more thing, Scott, um, you know, so for the futures markets like CL, you know, you won't have an NYSE tick measure because that's the number of stocks ticking up versus down. Right. But what you do have are delta measures, which is the proportion of volume that is being transacted at the market bid price versus the percentage of volume that is lifting offers. And you'll right. see a transition from hitting bids, hitting bids, hitting bids to now suddenly with those blue bubbles, lifting offers, lifting offers. So that acts like an NYSE tick measure, 
If you go on my Trader Feed blog, it's traderfeed.blogspot.com, you'll see examples of that delta measure and how that has picked up some really nice moves in the uh, ES futures market. Right, and, and kind of what to, we, to what he was saying here, I mean, you see the huge selling, I mean, yeah, it was stops, but you see by the size of the bubbles, that tells you too, right? Then you see some buying. Now look at the difference. Look at the difference between this bubble and this bubble. This just means they're aggressively, the sellers are starting to not be as strong. They try one more time, this is a little more than this, but it's still significantly lower than this. And then you see the buying and then off to the races, right? So again, you use this in conjunction with what you're looking at, what makes sense to you. And it just gives you so much more of an edge than it's, it's almost everybody that's trading retail wise. Um, anything else, Bruce? Um, well, we've been going an hour and 20 minutes and I know there was a, a, a bit of a, a delay in the beginning there um, and apologize for that guys um, to, to get Scott kind of up and running uh, and his images back. Uh, but uh, let, let's um, let, let me show you this, uh, guys. And I think this because there's a lot of questions coming in about this. And if you have particular questions about, you know, like Scott's looking at the, you know, the this um, uh, VWAP, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, different. Um, uh, uh, oh, God, what's the word? Uh, standard deviations, et cetera, like all of that kind of stuff. I think it's probably better if you if you just reach out directly um, to Scott on that. His email is in the chat. Right. Um, I also am putting in here, um, uh, I forgot, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Brett, uh, I have uh, his uh, blog uh, link in here as well. Uh, so you guys have that in the chat. Uh, but if, if, if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll take over for just a minute, and this will answer a lot of your questions about this new SI indicator. Uh, and then um, yeah. we'll, we'll go over any kind of parting thoughts um, with, uh, with both of you guys. Yeah, and again, you know, I went over a lot of stuff. Um, I do mentoring. My website is scottpulsinitrader.com. You can reach me there. Um, I think you have my email as well. If you have questions, just fire some questions to me. We can do mentoring, whatever you want. But uh, um, I will give this to you right now. Okay. Just a moment here. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right. So um, let me uh, open up this PDF and uh, is, it's in the chat. Um, so you guys, uh, or I'm sorry, the handouts folder, right? So you'll, you'll see it in there. Uh, and, um, and then we'll also, I'll also go through some of the links here about iceberg detectors. I've been like copying and paste them all, all into the, uh, in the chat here uh, for you guys. Uh, so you have all this information. Uh, and um, let me get the PDF as well. Here it is. Okay. All right. So, because if I just quickly just spend just a few minutes here, I, I think this will really help you guys. Because, um, you know, this is kind of important. This this is um, we haven't even publicly released this yet. Uh, Scott and and Brett wanted to go over these examples, uh, and uh, we're kind of like not quite ready. We haven't even introduced or you know made public the uh, um, the marketplace yet, a uh, new marketplace. So uh, anyway, so this is very temporary for now is my point, all right? Uh, this is what you'll need in order to get that MBO bundle with that, the stop iceberg tracker. Uh, you will need a, a, a subscription to Bookmap, either Global or Global Plus, uh, and it, you need the alpha version. I think it works with 7.0 as well, but get the alpha version, uh, 7.1. Then you will also need a separate subscription to rhythmic data for the CME. Okay, it's CME, rhythmic, and book map, and the SI indicator. That's what's required here. Uh, and the all the CME instruments, you know, like you can see them listed here. There's the ES, CL, NQ, uh, you know, gold bonds, notes, all that kind of stuff. It's all here. All right. So that's what's required. Here's the the process you can go through, and again, this PDF you can download in the handouts folder. If you click on View, you'll see the uh, handouts folder in there somewhere. Okay, and then uh, put a check mark next to it. Um, all right. So uh, once you subscribe to Bookmap, uh, then you know go through this process here. I'll go through it very quickly. Um, uh, then you'll need to also subscribe to uh, Rhythmic. There's a 14-day trial link here as well. Okay. Then there's the subscription to the MBO bundle here, 
Okay, this, this will take you to the marketplace. There's a, a video to watch uh, as well. Uh, and then the uh, there's a symbols guide here for all the different symbols from Rhythmic that you'll need us to uh, to input. Now, if you once you go through this process and add bookmap uh, or the MBO indicator to bookmap, you may need to restart bookmap. Okay, so just uh, note that, try that before reaching out to us in, in support and saying it doesn't work. Uh, and then uh, there's the article here. This is important because the article here uh, will take you to, okay, uh, and go through uh, all the details here. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about what setting is he using, uh, et cetera. Well, you know, all the settings are explained here, and then there's all sorts of examples of each setting and what they're showing. Okay, so uh, this article should be very helpful for you. Uh, it is on our blog, all right? Uh, oh, Bruce, I just wanna jump in real quick. Um, the setting for the iceberg and the stops, I, I use the exponential. Uh, they have exponential on reset. I didn't really get into that. You can learn that, but personally, I'm, I'm using the exponential. That's, the, what, that's what you're looking at on my charts. Right, right, yeah, Th thanks. Thanks for uh, uh, telling that, Scott. Um, if you guys uh, need further support, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, and, you know, as uh, both Scott and Brett had uh, described here in the article, we go through and say, look, this is not a, 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 a red light, green light system. Okay? What it's showing you is just more transparency. And, and that's undeniable. I mean, this emphatically shows, we know this, this is due to the market by order data from the CME that we can now uh, show with 100% you know, surety, we know that these are stops. And we know that these are icebergs, and that's that. Okay, it's all in the article, uh, and there's, there's, I'll show you links here. Uh, to you can look up MBO CME data. Just do Google search for CME and MBO, etc. All right, and uh, yeah, just the uh, read the risk disclaimer here as well about. Uh, uh, can I just jump in? Uh, excuse me. Can I just jump in real quickly? Unfortunately, I have a 12:30 Eastern commitment, and I'm going to have to take off. Uh, but I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you, Scott. Uh, for having me be part of this. Uh, it's really interesting, really exciting to see different data used in different ways and ways of putting that together to develop new edges. And uh, I look forward to interacting with traders. My email address is on the Trader Feed blog site. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brett. It was good to get back, get the band back together again. It was awesome. There you go. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you very much, Brett. It was uh, thank uh, you. Be care. well. Be yeah, well. Yeah, take care. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, guys, uh, the all the information is here, and and just note that this is temporary because soon you will be able to get rhythmic from our website, right? So uh, just this is the I know you you have to get all these kind of things a little bit separately at the moment to run through some hoops, uh, but you can get it if you want it. All right. So uh, use this guide here, uh, and then also that article, uh, and you know all the information is in here, okay? Uh, and uh, so if you reach out to us at support at bookmap.com, uh, they're, they're gonna just probably just send you this PDF, all right, and, and the link to the article, uh, because uh, this is the process to go through. Uh, anyway, uh, let me um, uh, turn it back over to, uh, to Scott and just go over any more, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, information that uh, uh, you wanted to kind of follow up with Scott. So hold yeah, on. do you? I mean, I can answer any questions if you have time. I mean, I'm I'm fine with time. Okay. Um, but do you have the uh, list of? Um, oh, you gave me back your screen. But do you have the list with my information, like the website and all that? Oh yeah, so I've been putting it into the chat um, uh, probably about four or five times throughout this webinar. Oh, okay. I just didn't see it in the handout thing. I thought that's. Oh, that's cool. not in the handouts. It's it's actually in the um uh, in the chat. Okay. So uh, yeah, yeah, look, yeah, look into the chat. Yeah. All the links are there. Uh, Scott's uh, email is there, uh, as well as his website, etc. So. Oh yeah, uh, I see it. Awesome. So yeah, any any specific questions regarding you know his trading style? I mean, Scott does mentoring, so you can just reach out to him directly. Okay. Um, guys, I. Well, uh, let me take a quick look here if there's one maybe parting question or anything that you want to go over, Scott. No, I mean, I've, I've gone over pretty much, you know, obviously it was fast, but um, I went over everything I wanted to go over. Okay. So, I mean, any, I can answer any questions or try to. Um, okay. The next few minutes. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. I guess I could be looking at it too. <laughs> Keep forgetting I have the access to the chat here. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, just, um, I think we've pretty much gone, gone over everything. Um, I, I think uh, we've, we've, you know, want to respect your time as well. This is an hour and a half now. Uh, it, it will be recorded. Uh, I put the recording link in there as well. Uh, guys, again, like this will only work with, uh, you need a combination, this, it's in the PDF, it, these, this combination of things. First, you need to subscribe to Bookmap. Second, uh, you need to subscribe to Rhythmic Data for Futures and connect Bookmap directly to Rhythmic. It won't work through NinjaTrader. Ninja is going to strip out the MBO data, okay? Because the data first comes into, into Ninja and then it is outputted to Bookmap. And they, that's, they're not gonna read that MBO data. So you, there's no uh, benefit at all. Uh, until they read that MBO data and output it. Okay, so you will have to you will have to connect directly to Rhythmic, right? And again, it's only for CME. Okay, so that those are the three uh, things that are required. Well, and then and then the subscription to the um, MBO bundle. There's more in that MBO bundle. There's um, you know you're getting three indicators actually, and I haven't covered any of the other ones, right? So I just just wanted to mention that. Um, and uh, I think I think that's it. Um, so uh yeah excellent example scott i i love the way that uh you're you're using this and and looking for that you know confirmation at specific levels you already had it and now you're just with a, a level of surety uh that uh is just enhanced uh, uh with transparency here in the marketplace right absolutely i mean again i mean i know there there might be some latecomers that didn't hear the beginning of the conversation but you know like you say on in your um handout i mean the, they're 100 percent accuracy as far as the types of the order types that are coming in because those are labeled a certain way based on stops and icebergs so you know it's not just some guess that these are icebergs or these are stops like you know that's what is happening which is just incredible information yeah yeah i mean and that's our future now i mean that's what or our present and and that's what we're getting now as retail traders which is amazing so we now have access to that guys uh anyway let's let's wrap it up uh, thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, I think uh, it was a, a, a fantastic idea uh, of, uh, of of getting you and, and Dr. Brett together uh, for this webinar. And I'm going to try to rally or uh, you know uh, uh, get another one going here uh, in the near future uh, sometime if we can. Absolutely. Okay. Just let me know. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. We'll wrap it up, and uh, we will uh, continue another time. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Appreciate thanks, it. Scott. Thanks. Bye -bye.